Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this week's webinar masterclass. My name is Sophie Arnold. I'm the Community Membership Manager here at Enterprise Nation. And today we have another masterclass, which is part of our Go and Grow online series, supported by 123Reg, VeriSign, and Microsoft. Uh, so today we have uh, Kiki Ericelli, who's going to be talking to you all about how to get your business noticed online. Um, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, you can type them into the box provided. So welcome, Kiki. Hi, Sophie. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me today. Um, and I'm looking forward to sharing with you some strategies and tips to help you get your business noticed. So let's start with the presentation. So why are you here today? So most likely you have a business. You might be online. You might be offline. Um, and you're thinking, how can I leverage the internet to grow my business, get more clients, and grow my brand? So that's what we're going to talk about today. You're going to learn the importance of visibility as a business owner. You're going to understand whether having a website is important for your business and whether you need one. The importance of social media, um, the one mistake to avoid when you are online, and seven ways not to do visibility. So if this is our first time meeting, for most of you it will be. My name is Chi Chi Erichalu and I'm a business strategist and a visibility coach. And I help my clients to basically get their brand noticed and known online. And I use strategies to help them not only lead with their strengths, so if you know, they like video, if they like writing, um, you know, we kind of leverage that in their content, but, but mainly around helping them use the internet so that they can get their message and their business in front of more people. I have clients all over the world, um, in America, Australia, obviously the UK and Europe, um, even in Africa and in Asia and Australia, and 90% of my business comes from Facebook. I have an online community of over um, 2,500 women, and my business has allowed me to leave my corporate job. I left my job last year at HSBC and have been able to be doing this full time, which I love. Um, and being able to leverage the internet has been really powerful for my business. Um, I, I'm able to create huge engagement with my community. I had a video that went viral last year, which was amazing, um, and that brought a whole influx of new people into my world. Um, and with having um, you know, good strategy around the online space, you can bring targeted leads into your business and build that know, like, and trust factor. So let's talk a little bit about digital marketing, which is essentially the process of using the internet to grow your business. The traditional way of marketing is like this. So most businesses, they'll have a storefront, a physical storefront, um, and they have a driveway, they have signage, they promote themselves they've got through the newspaper or TV or kind of direct mail um, and radio. There's also the telephone book, and that's the traditional way of how we do marketing. But in this new way of marketing online, this is how businesses now market themselves online. So what used to be the shop front is your website, um, whether you have web pages, sales pages, checkout areas. We have things called sales funnels, which is a way for you kind of getting people from not knowing who you are to becoming customers. Social media, we've got Facebook ads and Google ads. We've got email marketing. We've also got things like webinars and live streaming as we're doing today and SEO and podcasting. And so these are all the new ways of marketing online and helping people find out about your business and how your business can help them. So one of the things that is really important to understand is why visibility is important and essential. If people don't know who you are, they can't buy from you. So if you think about any of the brands that you really love and you like to buy stuff from, how did you know about them? It's because you might have seen an advert, you might have read a blog post or heard a podcast, seen something online. So they are visible and they can connect with you as their potential client. And in a crowded marketplace with a lot of people doing lots of different things, if you're focused on being visible, then you can stand out. It not only directly and indirectly helps to grow your business, but it gets you in front of your ideal clients quicker, which means that you can make more sales. Um, and there's lots of free tools out there to help you, um, and pay tools as well, but it helps to increase your impact and influence. So essentially, if people don't know who you are, you're not able to tell them that you can help them, um, and also help to grow your business too. And the new way of buying is such that people make purchases based on recommendation first, 
and then they go on trust and then they go online to search and verify. So if you think of the last thing that you bought, you may have asked your friends, what do you think, oh, I'm looking to get such and such an item, or you might have gone on Facebook and posted, does anyone know where I can buy X and Y? And then you would have you know, been given some recommendations and you possibly might have Googled and gone on Facebook or searched things. So the importance of you know, ranking highly and being in the online space is so important. And also if you're a local business, the focusing on local SEO is really, really powerful. People can find you um, and Facebook is fantastic for that. Um, and also obviously just being able to be found on Google as well. So do you need a website for your business? Um, and this is a question that is a bit of a loaded question because a lot of the times when people are starting off in business, the very first thing they want to go and do is get a website and get business cards and all these sort of things. So the answer to this question is yes and no. So if you have a business where you know who your ideal client is, you know what products and services you want to sell, and you know what your message is, yeah, sure, go ahead, it's so important to have a website. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. But if those things are still unclear for you, then going to get a website will not only, um, it will kind of slow you down because you're going to build something that you're later going to have to change. And so the first thing I would say, be really, really clear on who it is you want to target. So with marketing, whether it's online or offline, it's all directed and led by this whole idol client avatar. So you want to know who you're speaking to. If you try to market to everybody, then you'll attract nobody. So with your website, it's the same. Once you know who you're trying to attract and speak to, then all your images, your copy, the pages that you have on there will all be directed to this person. So if you know who that is, and if you know what your products and services are, then go ahead. Why is an effective website key? Well, if you think about yourself and how you do your shopping, I'm an online shopper. I love online shopping. Um, I get my groceries delivered, clothes, everything. And so more than two billion people use the internet. And over half of those users use it for shopping. And so your website is basically your 24 hour shop. So it needs to impress and needs to work for you. I like to call your website your kind of, um, it's your silent employee. So if you um, have a website that's not currently being effective for you, then you have an employee that's sleeping on the job because it's meant to be able to sell um, on your behalf. It's meant to provide information, provide answers to questions so that people can get everything they need to be able to make a buying decision about you. But equally, if you want to kind of, um, purchase a particular product or service and you are given a name of a business and you go to Google them and you can't find them, what sort of impression does that give you? Because even if you're not ready to build a full-on website, just having a landing page which tells people, yes, you know, a website's coming soon, here's details of how we can find you, just goes to show that you are online and there for people to see. It allows you to stay connected with your customers and build relationships. It converts people and gets, you know, like I said, through that funnel of people not knowing who you are and then being able to become customers of yours. Um, and it showcases your work and services to the world. So again, if they don't know you, they can't buy from you. And your website is basically your walk-in portfolio, um, your walk-in sales page, and all these things to allow people to know about your business. And people live in their phones and tablets. So having a mobile responsive website is really, really key. Um, these are a couple of things that you can think about with your own website if you have one. What is the goal of your website? Are you speaking to your ideal client? Your pages, um, do you have all the key pages on their home about services? How people can contact you? The amount of websites I review and go on and I can't find how to actually get in contact with the person whose website it is, is so many. And it's very frustrating for the end user. And if you think that's the first experience they have of you, they most likely won't come back. Um, also think about your functionality and the whole user experience. So can they find what they're looking for? If I land on your website within the first three seconds, can I tell what it is that you do? Um, and then also think about your content and visual appeal. And then how will you build relationships? Are you capturing people's emails? When people land on your website, can they find out? Um, can they sign up to your email list for you to contact them? Um, and these are other things that you might want to consider as well. You know, having Google Analytics set up on there so you can track, you know, views and visits to your website, but also installing the Facebook pixel. Even if you're not thinking about running Facebook ads right now, having the pixel on your website just allows you to start capturing people so that when you do run ads, you've already got an audience that's been building up for you. So why is social media important? And I'm <laughs> rattling through because I know we haven't got a lot of time and I want to get everything there for you. So why is social media important? Well, 
we have a massive population of internet users um, and it allows you to grow your business from the comfort of your own home or office or you know it allows you to build relationships and connect with your customers in a really easy way um, and the internet makes the world such a small place that you can have depending on the kind of business you have a global market um, and how does social media help your business? Well, it's a really easy way to learn about your audience. So if you think about it, you can find out who's you know, liking your posts, subscribing to your things on, you know, following you on Twitter or Instagram. It gives you an idea about your audience and what they like. It helps you find new customers and also expand your existing customer base. And another great thing about social media, it allows you to receive instant feedback from your customer's perspective. Before social media, if somebody didn't like your business, they would just go and tell all their friends. Okay, or if they liked your business, they'll tell their friends um, within their kind of, you know, immediate vicinity. Now you just go on Twitter or Facebook and say, I had the most amazing experience, or this restaurant was rubbish, which is why it's so important that if you're running your own social media, you respond to comments, you respond to people, good or bad, because that is the quickest way to kill your reputation with people saying things um, and you're not responding back to them. So social media helps you to manage your own PR which is really, really important. Reputation management online is so key because things can spread like wildfire. Um, social media also helps to increase your website traffic, social media, um, SEO rankings, obviously because you drive traffic to your website. You can share content faster and easier with social media. So if you've created something, you want to get it out there, you want to get an opinion on something, you can do that really quickly and easily with social media. And when I talk about social media, I'm talking about things like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, Snapchat, Instagram, Pinterest, these are all the main social media platforms. It allows you to create meaningful relationships with your customers and build trust. So it's, there's nothing more endearing, I guess is the right word, when you um, have a really great experience with a brand, you may tweet a picture or put something on Instagram and they respond back or they feature you know, something that you've done. It's a really great way to get connected to your clients and customers. So it allows you to listen to your audience, share your relevant message, and also enable others to share your message too. So again, in the old, well not say the old days, in the old way of doing old, uh, marketing, you know, you could get a flyer and then you could, you know, send, you know, share it with your friend and, you know, but there's only so far those sort of things can go or, you know, have a newspaper and you can share this physical thing. Now you can put something out on Twitter and it gets retweeted and it goes everywhere or you can um, put something on Facebook and people share it. So you can get your message far out massively. So, it's really important that you have a strategy around what you're doing um, and you're not kind of using social media in isolation. It forms part of your overall marketing plan, but it's a very, very powerful tool. So um, I love this quote. It talks about, um, it's saying, for companies to resist social media, it's futile. Millions of people are creating content for the social web. Your competitors are already there. Your customers have been there for a long time. If your business isn't putting itself out there, it ought to be. So just something to think about. Okay. Final things on, on how you can use social media, like I said, public relations, customer support, a lot of businesses, um, particularly um, software as a service businesses, or just any sort of business that has a community aspect, they set up Facebook groups for them to connect with their clients. It's a really great way to get feedback, for them to you know, tell them things um, and build a community around your brand. Market research, so again, you can put out, you know, we were thinking of putting out this product, what do you like, do you like this color or that color? Or, you know, when I was releasing my podcast, I went out to my community and said, tell me which intro music do you like, which cover do you like? And it gives them a sense of being part of your community. Um, social media can be used with brand marketing, promotions, consumer education, so letting people know your, cons your customers or potential customers know about your brand and your products and why your products are great. Um, and it's a really great way to educate people. Obviously, you can sell on social media, but it's also really about giving value before you know the sale. So it's not always about sell, 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 but kind of giving value, giving value, giving value, then the invitation to the sale. Product development and also customer relationship management. So the mistake you must avoid, the one mistake you must avoid, and I've briefly touched on this, this is not knowing who your ideal client is, okay? Because that what drives everything that you do. So who are they? Who are they? What is their problem? Do you have the solution to their problem? Are they willing to pay for that problem to be solved? Um, where are they? And what platforms do they hang out? You don't need to be everywhere with social media. You just need to be where your ideal clients are. So if you are somebody who knows that your customers are on Facebook, my clients are on Facebook, the majority of them. 
Um, yes, I can find clients on LinkedIn um, and other platforms, but the majority um, for my coaching business comes from Facebook. And because of that, I spend the majority of time on Facebook. So have a think about where are your clients hanging out and spend time there and really leverage that platform, get to know it well um, and be masterful. So know who your ideal client is because if you are confused around that, and that's something that I find with you know when clients come to me, then it, that is the thing that influences the products and services that you put out there, your messaging and everything. So that's the mistake that I see people making and the one that I want you to avoid. Um, and like I said, you know, choosing your platform, where should you be, what should I post? You know, it's really important to be consistent and choose a platform, like I said, where your clients are, but also, you know, in terms of what you should post um, and where you should be, People are craving connection. And they want to know that the company that they're doing business with, they can, you know, they share the same values. They, you know, they want to know who's behind the business and what you're about. They want to know your story. Um, and so a lot of brands who are really successful in leveraging social media, they, and the internet in general, they basically allow people to come into their world. They, you know, show what's going on behind the scenes. You can meet their team. You can ask them questions. And, you know, you can get connected to them very closely. Um, you can also have a saying what comes out next in some cases and that gives customers a really great um, identity in terms of relating to your brand. So Facebook, um, I would say as for majority of companies, unless you're like a big corporate and even a big corporate, in fact all companies, having a Facebook page um, I think is like the bare minimum. Not only does it help in terms of SEO because Facebook is a massive platform and it helps with your rankings when you search for your business, but Everybody's on Facebook, you know, old and young, um, and people looking for businesses, you know, and looking for different things, and they can search, they will find your business. So I think as a bare minimum, having the Facebook page is important. And then the other platforms are really dependent on your idol client, like where they hang out and what they do. I'm not going to go into detail about each of these platforms because we don't have a lot of time, but they're the main ones which you can have a look at and find out more about, and depending on your demographic of client, you can choose which one's relevant for you. Okay, so here are the visibility mistakes that I see people making, okay? So, um, they are in the wrong place, okay? Being in the wrong place, this is why I talk about not having to be everywhere. If your clients are not on LinkedIn or Twitter, don't be there, you're gonna waste your time. And you can be in the right platform and be building great relationships um, and not waste your time. The second mistake I see people making is that they don't leave with value. It's all about buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. Or they just put out things for, you know, the sake of putting out things. You have to realize that particularly on Facebook and on social media, it's so fast paced and there's so much information out there. Even with your content on your website and your blogs and podcasts, everything else that you've put out there. There's so much information out there. When you put your stuff out, you have to ask yourself, am I adding to the noise and why bring in value and so really think about how people are going to leverage and use the information that you're giving them. Um, another mistake I see people making is they're not authentic and they're not original, they try to copy other brands, they see what other people are doing and they think oh I'll just do that because they're doing that. The mistake in doing that is that you don't understand the reasons behind why people do certain things. So I love video and it's one of my core strengths in terms of how I do my marketing. Now for somebody else, video might not be their thing, but they're like, well, Chi Chi's doing video, so I'm gonna do video as well. Now, for them, that lack of um, comfort and authenticity will show in their videos, whereas somebody could be an amazing writer, um, and writing is not my strength. I can write, but it's not my strength. I would prefer to speak. And so I always say to my clients, you know, be original, be yourself. Don't be afraid to show the world who you are. Humanize your brand. Fourth mistake I see people making is really poor visual branding. So you might have the most amazing products and services, but if I come to your website or your social media and it's you know, discoordinated, you know, really rubbish colors, um, and there's no strong visual branding, that really puts people off because people make judgments based on what they see and what they see very early on. So if that's something that you need to invest in your business, I really, really would advocate that you do that because you could be missing out on sales and business because people have made a judgment about your business based on what they visually see. The other thing, a uh, mistake I see is, is people hiding behind a brand. So if you have a business, you know, let people know who's behind the business, what you're about, because people like to connect with other humans and also, you know, humanize your brand. If you think about 
some of the big brands and they have really strong leaders who are very visual you know um, Steve Jobs and Richard Branson and but also brands like Innocent you know they have humanized their brand they are very relatable so how can you stop hiding behind the brand um, another visibility mistake I see people making is not having any calls to action. So you're posting on social media, and you're putting all these great stuff out there. What's the next step for people? You need to direct them and tell them what it is that they need to do next. So do they need to book a call with you or visit your website or sign up for your newsletter? Always direct people. They want direction. Let them know. Um, and the final thing, which is one of the biggest things, is not being consistent. So you start off being, you know, posting on social um, you know, a couple of days and then you kind of stop and then you kind of come back a couple of weeks later. In order to build trust with people, um, you need to be consistent, you need to be showing up all the time. And you don't have to be physically showing up all, all the time, but you know, through the use of good tools and things like that, you can be seen to be showing up all the time consistently and that's really, really important. Okay. So to summarize, <laughs> visibility is really important. Okay. Um, having a website that works for you is also a key. But don't jump into a website if you're not ready, if you don't know who your ideal client is, what your products and services are, and what your message is. Make sure that you really know who your ideal client is. Make sure that you leverage local search if you're a local business. Um, and always lead with value. Always ask yourself, is this going to be helpful to my client, my customer base? Are they going to be able to use this information? Have clear calls to action. Stay consistent because um, that's really important. And just have fun with it. You know, social media is marketing. You want to just don't be so serious about it, have fun with it, utilize the tools that are out there um, and make sure that you can then manage and grow your business in the way that you want to do it. Okay, so that is all the presentation. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to open up the questions, um, but before we do, just one thing, if you want to take this a bit deeper and kind of get more support for yourself, then you can get in contact with me. I have a whole host of free resources for yourselves. If you go to this link here, which is Chi Chi, e.co forward slash en hyphen resources that's got a load of um, resources for you to help with your visibility and social media so that's free for you to do that if you want to have a chat with me and do it one-on-one -on -one, then um, I've got a special offer for you there but thanks Guy. Great. thank you that was a great presentation very detailed um, we've got quite a few questions come in so I'm just gonna uh, dive straight into it we'll get through as many as we can here um, so the first question we've got in, um, maybe could you explain a little bit more about what you mean by uh, leveraging local search? Yeah, so if you're a local business, so there's a couple of things that you can do so that you can be found online. So on that slide, let me quickly go back to it quickly, if I let me do it. Um, if you, you know if you search on Google and you'll see some searches come up higher than others because they've registered their business with Google Locals. Let me just, where is it now? I want you to do that. Yeah, here you go. So you can go and set up a Google Plus local account, which means that when people search for a business because you've registered it in the location, it will come up higher in the search engines. Um, also with Facebook, um, having your Facebook business page um, and telling Facebook that it's a local business, putting in your address and everything on your locations that also helps with being found as well um, and then if you want to go as far as running Facebook ads then you can get really targeted because you can tell you know Facebook I want you to show this Facebook ad to you know a five mile radius of where I am uh, or 10 mile radius or 25 mile radius so that's what I mean by that yeah great thank you uh, we've had a couple of questions um, around this next kind of topic so um, People would like to know, uh, as a small business, you have quite a limited budget. Um, where would you recommend being the kind of priority areas and how do you decide where to spend that budget if you kind of can't afford to do everything? So if you can't afford to do everything, it really depends on the product or service that you're selling. I think leverage the free things. So have a good website that you have optimized. Um, you know, make sure that you have your Facebook page. Make sure that you're kind of leveraging free things like, you know, um, great content because if you think about when people search for things and what they're looking for they'll usually find a blog post or they'll find an image that's related to the thing that they're searching for so leverage those sorts of free things if you have a little bit of money to spare I mean I personally find that Facebook ads give you the best return um, for kind of leveraging what you have because they can be so so targeted and, um, and those are, I mean, also Google AdWords, but I'm not um, a pro on that, so I can't comment most on that. But I, you know, we run Facebook ads and get really, really good results. So if you haven't got 
a big budget you can you know you can run Facebook ads around five pounds a day and get good results but the most important thing is that if you haven't got that baseline of you know a solid website um, for people to kind of even come back to then you're going to be running ads to nothing and I don't ever allow clients to run ads of any kind unless they've got something to receive those leads to come into because you could you know spend all this money and it kind of goes into a black hole so leverage the free stuff leverage the tools make sure that you are you know using social media at, to connect with your ideal clients um, I mean I'm always a big fan of Facebook and Twitter is really good as well if you if you your clients are on there um, if you are a brand that has is a very visual brand and is um, I'm going to give an example, visual brand, um, kind of creative type brand. Pinterest is a massive traffic generator. So you can use Pinterest to drive traffic back to your website as well. And these are all free things that you can do. So leverage the free things, but if you have a bit of money, Facebook ads is really good. Great. Um, and I actually had a, a question on, on the topic of um, targeting advertising. So maybe we'll move on to that one now. Um, so this company has narrowed down their audience um, to uh, people between 25 and 40 interested in healthy eating. Um, is that narrow enough or should you be trying to pin that down into uh, something even more precise? Yeah, I think that's really, really broad because um, within that you've got male and female, within that you've got mums, you've got within that you've got different kinds of healthy eating. So, for example, if I was running Facebook ads for that sort of thing, I would break that down to different age groups because um, different ages have a different perspective on healthy eating, different sexes as well. There's also the fact that you've got to think about um, the, the thing that you're... I mean, healthy eating is, is really, really broad. And so within that, you must have... A kind of niche or specialist within that that you kind of want to really focus on rather than just healthy eating because within healthy eating you've got different extreme you've got weight watchers and people class that as healthy eating or you've got paleo or you know whole 30 or you know there's masses of so if you were looking to target people you would want to know what kind of healthy eating do they class as healthy eating and then what other brands kind of are in that sort of demographic to see what sort of things that they like and um, what kind of other sites that they visit target more that way so yeah you need to go a bit deeper um, and even by sex as well I think you want you might want to narrow it down great thank you um, a question here about um, you mentioned uh, testing if your website is effective how would you go about doing that okay so there's different ways you can do this um, you can get somebody who has never seen your website before, who is your idle client. So don't get your mom or your dad because they might not even be your idle clients and they won't give <laughs> feedback that's relevant, is helpful. So if you get somebody who's never seen your website before, get them to go to your website and say, um, you know, can you tell me by coming on my website what we do? Can you, and, and give them specific things. How easy is it to book a thing? How easy is it to contact us? Ever so often, and, and we have it as a quarterly thing, um, but it could be monthly, you know, we go in and check all the links because so often we forget. So there's things like going in to check all the links, is everything linking and making sense? Um, if I land on my web, land on your website, I have all the pictures there, so the text come up, um, you know, spelling, grammatical errors, can I move across the site? Can I find your products and services? Do the payment buttons work? Can I contact you? Um, so there's ways you can do that there. In terms of SEO, you can check and see whether you have like the meta description, um, if you have pictures, and this is going a bit more technical, do you have the alt description? So that's when, you know, because Google cannot see pictures. Google can only see text. So when you have pictures on a website that have no description, they just have the description of whatever the picture is called. It doesn't tell them anything. So there's things like that. Um, how quickly does your website load? If I go on my phone, can I see everything? Or are things broken? Or um, you know, paragraphs broken? So get people to look at it who are in your, you know, who are your ideal clients to have a look. Even your current clients, does this make sense to you? But having people who have never seen it before is really good. And when I go and do audits, um, I literally just go on the site and record myself seeing it for the first time. I don't like to go on beforehand and just literally go and have a play and see. Does this work? Does it load fast? Can I find what I'm looking for? Does this make sense? So that's what I would do as well. Great, thank you. Um, we have a question here. How do you humanize yourself um, when using uh, social media as a business? Is What's the line between humanizing and oversharing? Okay. 
<laughs> so I, this is a really good question. I think little things like, you know, on a Facebook business page, okay, the profile picture, you could have a logo or you could have a face. I mean, it depends if you've got a company with lots of people, then maybe you might have your logo as the profile picture, but maybe the cover image is a picture of all your team. Um, you know, humanizing yourself is kind of sharing behind the scenes of your business. Who works for you? You know, who works for you? What's the mission behind your business? Why did you start your business? It's not necessarily saying, oh, this is what I have for tea sort of thing. But, you know, through things like, for example, Instagram stories, this is how I use um, social media to humanize my brand. So I have, I share pictures of what I'm doing within my business. I share behind the scenes. I use Instagram stories as like a vlog because it deletes itself after 24 hours. So if I'm doing something, I can be, you know, recording it and saying this is what I'm doing, or I've gone to this place. Um, it's just really not, you know, kind of having this mindset that other people want to com connect with other humans. So they want to know who's behind the business. Your about page is the most visited page on your website. Why? Because people want to know who's behind this business. Why do they start this business? Can I relate to this person? So humanizing your brand is really just letting people a little bit into your world. You don't need to reveal all your life secrets. You don't need to do that. You, need, you just need to be able to um, share enough so that people can relate to you. All of you have started a business for a reason. Why did you start your business? People want to know that. You know what motivates you. What inspires you to create your products and services. Share those things. That's what humanizes your brand. It makes it become less of a faceless machine. Then this is Joe, and he runs this business, and this is why he started his business, and that's why I go to Joe because I like Joe. People buy from people. Great, thank you. I think we've got time for just one more question. Uh, we have one here about your top tips for um, tools to use to, um, especially for social media scheduling, but I guess any type of, um, of tools to use to make this kind of thing a little bit easier. Yeah, sure. So there's, um, the one I use is one called SmarterQ, um, and I can give you a link so you can get a 30 day free trial if you want. And the reason why I like SmarterQ, I used to use Buffer and I've used Hootsuite and things like that, is that you with the likes of buffer and things like that you have to go and keep uploading your content so once you've uploaded it and scheduled it you then it kind of, kind of puts it all out there and you have to go back and do it again with smarter queue it works with the premise of libraries and, and categories so i have a category for blog posts and or promos or different things like that and all i have to do is upload the library and then it pulls things from the library on the schedule that i've created so i prefer smarter queue for that reason, um, because it allows me to be more effective with my time. And whenever we you know we create a new blog or a podcast, we just add it into the podcast library, and it will just keep churning things out. If you use, you know, Buffer, and we use Buffer for quite a long time, but if for whatever reason the person who's supposed to be uploading it forgets or is sick or they don't do it, then social media still doesn't go out. Whereas it will still go out with there. So if you want to try SmarterQ, if you um, the URL for that is. Um, so you get a 30 day trial. If you go chichi.co forward slash get hyphen smarter Q or one word, that will give you a 30 day free trial and you can test it out and see if you like it. But it's really affordable as well. And there's other platforms, um, there's Post Planner, Co Schedule, if you want to be able to schedule your content and blogs and all that sort of thing. Out. But we use um, Smarter Q and it schedules up for Twitter and um, LinkedIn and Facebook. And then I use grum.co for Instagram. So that posts for me um, on Instagram on a schedule. Great, thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, sticking with us through lots of different questions there. Uh, hopefully we've managed to, uh, to answer all of those for everyone. So um, next week for the Masterclass, we have um, a Ask us all about how to get the most out of your employees. So hopefully we will see uh, lots of you joining us for that one as well. Uh, thank you again, uh, Titi, for your uh, presentation today, and we hope to see you again soon.